Hello, I'm Dolores Casey, the Children's Services Librarian with the Cork County Council Library and Arts Service, and I'd like to introduce Shervin Dean from Skibbereen Library and Icky Keane from Cove Library. Welcome. And um, today, Shervin and Icky and myself are going to discuss encouraging reluctant child readers. We have already discussed this in our previous video and we discussed how with tips and strategies on how to motivate children who are reluctant to read and who are reluctant to maybe move on in their reading journey and today we're going to develop it a little bit further and we're going to discuss maybe alternatives to actual traditional reading which maybe will help the child who is reluctant to engage there are other resources that we offer that maybe could do the trick. So first of all, I'll turn to Shervin. Um, Shervin, do you want to maybe join in on that topic and tell us what you think? Yes, thank you very much, Dolores. Um, well, a very popular alternative that I have used uh, with my own children is undoubtedly audiobooks. Um, and we have a huge selection of them in our library, in our libraries. Um, and they they come in the format of books on CD. And um, we also um, have a huge range of them to download from BorrowBox, from the BorrowBox app as well. And um, I just find the children can listen to them while they're playing calmly. And um, they're great for car journeys and also um, just for settling down to sleep at night. And um, my my own children enjoy these so much that they listen to the same books over and over again. Um, so it takes the effort out of this out of it uh, when they're tired and when you're tired. And also um, the narrators will usually make it very you know exciting and very enhanced um, the the experience for the child. Um, and a huge benefit too when when listening to the audiobooks is having the actual physical book um, with them when they're listening and um, so that the the child can follow along with the story uh, in the book and that's that's a really good way of improving their reading skills and um, it helps the child with any literacy issues um, because the the child gets better at sounding out the words and also at re reading comprehension. So um, I would highly recommend the, the audio books, most definitely. Excellent. Yep, great stuff. Thanks. So, will I um, do you want to anything else, Sherman, or do you want me to <laughs> hand over, will I hand over to Icky just for a little while and give you a break and we can come back to you again in a moment? Or? Yep, that would be lovely. Yeah, yep, great. So Icky, um, what would you recommend? Do you have alternatives to reading and books or do you just have maybe alternative format of books that you think could be helpful? I think you're muted, Icky. There we go. Hello, Dolores. Uh, Hi, um, yeah, I think that as long as a child is reading and enjoying reading, it really doesn't matter if they're not reading a, a, a traditional uh, fiction book. And there, there are so many other things out there that you could enjoy and not to concentrate so much just on the old fictional books. So mm -hmm. one of the ones would be manga, very popular, something like this. We have mm -hmm. uh, a lot of uh, graphic novels and comics. The DC Marvel comics are very popular. But nowadays we've got even more interesting ones such as you can read the diary of Anne Frank in graphic form and so on. So there's lots of the, lots of different types of graphic novels coming uh, and getting published. So that's that's uh, another format that's mm -hmm. really good. Yeah. Um, and again, if you don't like fiction, go for nonfiction. A lot of uh, children love facts. So that's this is one that I have been reading all about Africa, the mm -hmm. different countries in Africa. And uh, again, they always have absolutely the, the uh, nonfiction books these days are just full of uh, amazing. Uh, I'll just show you their amazing illustrations, colorful and full of interesting facts. So go sure for to engage. Yeah. yeah, go for a nonfiction book because be children love having facts and they like to mm. tell their friends about facts. And we have loads of uh, different um, types of uh, nonfiction in our libraries. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so, so that's one. Uh, the other one I would say is uh, maybe verse novels. This is a teenage one by Kwame Alexander, very popular, called mm. Rebound. Uh, again, there's not a lot of words on the page, but it's like poetry and uh, children can get through them 
a lot quicker than say a traditional book so uh, there are lots of those being produced at the moment as well I've seen lots of them in the library verse novels are very popular with the authors and they're brilliant they're absolutely brilliant Kwame Alexander is brilliant there's some lovely ones uh, in the young adult by Elizabeth Acevedo so there's lots of different ones Sarah Crossan is another one who has wonderful verse novels the uh, the other one is uh, I would just mention uh, Barrington Stoke books because uh, Again, they're a really uh, good publisher. They're recommended for uh, people maybe who have uh, dyslexia or just children who might want something shorter than your mm -hmm. book. So I have yeah. one here. This one is, again, it's, I think it's a Teenage Read Lark by Anthony McGowan. Mm -hmm. And set out on a cream background so mm -hmm. it's easier for children to uh, concentrate and read the words on those. Mm -hmm. So dyslexia friendly. Yeah, so they yeah. so they're Barrington Stoke are a good publisher, and the books are written by the mainstream authors, so they will recognise the names of those authors, mm -hmm. and uh, the stories are interesting. So um, excellent, yeah. great stuff. Shervin, can I hand over to you again? Do you want to? Did you have something else that you wanted to add? Yeah, I just wanted to touch there on the the amount of um, great apps that we have on our um, library website. Um, I mentioned BorrowBox, the BorrowBox app there earlier uh, for reading and for listening. Um, but uh, we also have RB Digital, which um, can be accessed under the e-magazines tab. And, and there's Press Reader as well, which can be um, accessed under the e newspapers tab. Um, and, you know, with, with parental supervision, both of these apps um, have a lot of magazines, which would be of interest to children. Uh, for example, in RB Digital, um, there are um, a range of pet magazines and magazines about animals. And there's also the National Geographic Kids magazines mm. on there, and uh, there's a few more for children as well. Excellent. Um, yeah, then the press nice reader. alternative to just the traditional, exactly. you know, like yeah. the child sitting exactly. there reading the book. I think they're just so used to devices these days as well that maybe it just seems a little more kind of um, accessible to a lot of kids. Um, and as we've mentioned before, any reading is is valuable reading. So whether it's, you know, listening um, or reading nonfiction or reading, you know, these magazines online. Yeah, um, exactly. It's all Certainly. very valuable. But I just wanted to touch there on the Press Reader um, app, which has a, a very wide range of, um, you know, animal magazines, pet magazines. Um, a huge amount of craft and hobby magazines and there's a, a big selection for children and for teens on that, you know, on a range of, of subjects. So really worthwhile having a look into um, either of those. And I suppose uh, it's worthwhile mentioning that they're all free of charge. You may have said that now already, so forgive me if you did, but they're all free of charge with the free library membership. So, I mean, they're, you know, everybody can access them. Free yeah. of charge and they're quite easy to use once you have your library card, I think, aren't they? Yep, that's right. Very easy to use, very easy to access, get into it. Yeah, no problem. Um, lastly there, Dolores, I'll just mention um, the, the large selection of juvenile learning support books that we have. Um, Icky touched on it there with the Barrington Stoke. Uh, we also have a huge amount of literacy readers in our libraries. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the Literacy Tower, Oxford Reading Tree, and the PM Plus readers, mm -hmm. and uh, a number of different ones like that. And they're there in a range of levels, and they'd be hugely popular, and they are for paired reading with your child, for literacy support. And they progress as well, I suppose. That kind of helps, you know, they start from such a basic level and get a little bit more difficult as they move on, so. Yeah, so you can go up through the struggle. Level. Yeah, yeah. So as you can see, the the libraries have a um, a huge range of ways to entice uh, your child to read and to engage them in in reading and to support their lit literacy. Brilliant. You know? Yeah, sounds yeah. There's a great range of books and and other resources. I suppose we shouldn't forget that that we have a large range of of stuff to encourage children. Iki, do you want to add anything else? Um, I would just mention wordless picture books uh, mm -hmm. because I think uh, uh, certainly if say parents don't have English as their first language 
Um, I think wordless picture books are great because they mm -hmm. uh, mean that the parent and, uh, can, and child can interact with the book and you can basically uh, read the story and make up the story from the pictures that are there. And so you're not really held back by words. Mm -hmm. But again, you are engaging with the child and you are in a way reading to them. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, in, I think that can be a very pleasurable uh, activity as well. I had a couple of um, books that Shervan mentioned now, the BorrowBox app, and there are a couple of, uh, it's, it's an app that I have made huge amounts of use over uh, the lockdown period, just to kind of increase my own knowledge of children's books. And mm -hmm. also because I love reading children's books and sometimes it's easier uh, to try and uh, listen to the books while you are doing other things such as traveling to work or doing your yeah. boring jobs. And um, if, if it's OK, I can just mention my top 10 of um, yeah, top top reads that I've really, really enjoyed. So the first one is Evernight by Ross McKenzie. Absolutely brilliant uh, book, uh, full of uh, danger and magic. And uh, again, we haven't been able to travel anywhere this year, but you can really travel through the books. And yeah, uh, with, with, with Evernight, I was down in the sewers hunting for treasure with Larabelle. Uh, and she's a tosher. She that's her. She she tries to find treasure in the sewers and sell it to make a bit of money. And it involves witches and trying to find this doomsday spell so that uh, they can fight the villains and save the Silver Kingdom. And Ross McKenzie is an amazing uh, author. And particularly to listen to that book, you really get the full atmosphere of the book. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend. That one. The other one, another fancy adventure, strangely enough, was the Wizards of One series by mm -hmm. Presida Cowell. Again, amazing. And I just love the fact that these this whole series is read by David Tennant, you know, former Doctor Who. Mm. And uh, it's just so dramatic. Great the narrator. Way, the way he narrates it. Absolutely brilliant. And again, you, I accompanied Zah, who's a young wizard and wish a warrior princess. Uh, into the, the the woods and try to save the human and the magic worlds from the king witch and all the bad witches in this one and another one another fantasy one strange enough was, <laughs> you I like your fantasy it's, I, I it's awesome. so i think we all just need doors we need a strange worlds you know and was a clock of stars by francesca gibbons the debut not debut novel and again this is where i followed two sisters uh, through a door in a tree to a strange land and uh, the sisters befriend a young lonely prince and they fight all the baddies to save the kingdom. Again, absolutely amazing book. Uh, so I had to get back to a dose of reality. So I went <laughs> to uh, uh, Sarah Pennypacker who did, uh, who wrote Pax. Oh, but yeah. This one was here in the real world, mm. which was a uh, lovely and what would be probably considered a quiet book where there's no kind of uh, excitement or adventure happening, but the characters are, are, are beautifully built up and the story is so lovely. And here I took refuge in an abandoned church garden with the uh, main protagonist, Ware, who's a dreamy introvert, and his friend Jolene while they try to uh, build this garden as a sanctuary. And again, it's a lovely uh, journey that the children go on to discover themselves and to find friendship. Sounds uh, great. Went back to some rather dark times with the Second World War with Maurice Gleitzman in his one series. And oh, yeah. it's lovely Excellent. and it's lovely that all of them are on Borrow Box. So once you finish mm. one, you can go on to the next one. And this was lovely, you know, following the life of Felix, a boy who's caught up in occupied Poland and he tries to search for his parents. But again, a lovely historical mm. uh, novel following everything in the Second World War. And very much recommended by schools, you know, because right. a lot of schools and yeah. teachers read it with their classes. So that's a great recommendation. Lovely. Sorry. And going way further back into the First World War to uh, Hilary McKay's The Skylarks War. Again, Hil I love Hilary McKay. Mm. And yeah, I thought yeah. The Skylarks War was a, a wonderful, wonderful read. Mm. Uh, and then I lived on a mountain with um, uh, Ellie and her family in Lauren Woke's Echo Mountain. She's an American author. And it's one of her books that is on the borrow box. And I loved it so much that I really want to now read the rest of the books that she has written as well. And this is after the stock market crash of 1929. And Ellie's father is hurt in, a, um, in an accident and he goes into a coma. And it's how Ellie learns how to become a healer by befriending 
someone who is referred to as a hag and shunned uh, up on the mountain. But this is a lovely, mm. absolutely gorgeous book. And Sounds then okay. slightly more um, of an empathy read, uh, Turtle Boy by uh, oh, yes. Wolkenstein. Mm -hmm. Absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful book about a boy who's being bullied uh, because of his shrinking chin, because he has a medical condition, mm -hmm. and how he befriends this boy in hospital called uh, RJ and tries to carry out all RJ's uh, bucket list adventures and how he then grows. And in a way, it's called Turtle Boy because that is something that the other children bully him with, calling him Turtle Boy because of his shrinking chin. But also it shows how he comes out of his shell as well. And again, yeah. and he loves turtles. So there's loads of information about turtles as well. Uh, mm. So after all that reality, I just had to read something mm -hmm. funny and I went for Jenny Pearson's debut novel, The Super Miraculous Journey of Freddie Yates, which oh, was yeah. really my <laughs> most favourite funny book of 2020. And I'm so looking forward to her new one this year as well. And uh, this was travelling through Wales on adventures with Freddie and his friends to try and find Freddie's biological father. A very, very funny book. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last one, I'd say, if you like trains and you like adventure, mystery, crime and a bit of humour thrown in, go for the Adventures on Train series by M.G. Leonard uh, and uh, Sam Sedgman. They've got three books out now, and I know that two of them are on our Borrow Box series, The Highland Falcon Thief and uh, Kidnap on the California Comet, and they are brilliant. They keep you guessing until the end. So they're my top 10 Borrow Box. Wow. Thank you. This will stop tour through the Borrow Box app and the wonderful mm -hmm. titles that are on offer. Thank you, Icky, for that. That was amazing. Um, Shervin, thank you. It was most interesting talking to you again, and mm -hmm. I hope this will be of help to um, parents and teachers, of course, who maybe are trying to motivate their children to read. And as Shervin pointed out, reading reading is everywhere. It doesn't have to be traditional books, you know, as long as a child is reading something or listening to something. Um, that's also an option, as in the audiobook option. Um, at least they're absorbing it and, you know, maybe they could be motivated to read in the future. And if they're not, at least they're learning something. So mm -hmm. I think we're all we're all happy enough with um, the discussion today. Does anybody want to add anything or are we we're OK? okay. I'd like to thank you both. Thanks very much for that, Iki, and thanks, Shervin. And um, hopefully this hopefully this will be of interest to the parents and the teachers and will be of some help. Bye bye. OK.